Can I just ask a question of the audience first? Has anyone got an iPhone or a similar internet mobile phone? Could you just look up uh, Friends of the Earth Policy on Population? It's a briefing from March 2010. Uh, Friends of the Earth Policy on Population? Just look it up on your iPhone. I'll refer to it in a minute, but I don't want to see if people, I want people to think I'm making up what's, what I'll say is in there. Uh, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, I can't answer everything in this short time. I'll try and come back to some things later on. But just, first of all, just to remind people of the benefits of growth, because that seems to have been forgotten in this discussion. If you remember my statistic, average life expectancy in 1800, 30. Average life expectancy in uh, 2000, 67. That's one very big uh, example. Uh, if you want to take infant mortality, average infant mortality in developing countries, 180 per 1,000 in 1950. 60 per thousand in 2000. In other words, it's fallen to a third of the level. That might not be very much to Richard. I would suggest to ordinary families in the third world, that is quite important. Smallpox. Who talks about smallpox nowadays? No one, because it's been eradicated. But the eradication of smallpox, which was, came through the development of science and technology, meant that we eradicated a disease, part of nature, that killed hundreds of millions of people in the early part of this century. That's closely related to economic progress. China. China has grown more rapidly than any other country over the past 30 years. It's true that inequalities have widened in China over that time, but the average income in China has increased tenfold over that period. And according to a World Bank study, the level of absolute poverty fell from 53% to 8% in the years from 1981 to 2001. I can give a lot more examples, but we shouldn't forget there have been huge advantages to ordinary people not just to the rich, to ordinary people from economic growth. We can debate the future, but I would maintain there's very little to debate about the past in terms of the huge benefits of economic growth. Uh, and what I would like to see in terms of the third world, I don't want sustainability. The last thing I want is sustainability. Because sustainability means sustaining poverty in the third world. It means sustaining a situation where you have a billion people living in hunger, where you have about, about a billion people living in less than, less than a dollar a day, about three billion people living on less than two dollars a day. We have women in India, as you correctly say, carrying water and bricks on their head. I want the third world to be as industrialized and developed as the West, so we have real equality, and so people in the third world can benefit uh, from what we have in the West in terms of technology, prosperity. They can benefit fully from it. Uh, I won't come back on climate change now, I'll talk about it, other things and scarce resources. Just to uh, refer to this Friends of the Earth policy on population, which I downloaded on the internet in preparation for this meeting. I hope people can ratify what I'm saying. What it says in here is that Friends of the Earth would like to see global consumption decrease by a factor of 10. By a factor of 10. That's not 10%. That's a factor of 10. That's 90%. If you think about what a 6% fall in output caused in terms of dislocation, which was a recent economic crisis, can you imagine what a 90% decrease would, would mean? It would mean turning Britain, for example, into sub-Saharan Africa. Can you imagine you trying to live on 10% of your income? Can you imagine having 10% of the hospitals? Can you imagine having 10% of the schools? In fact, it would be worse than that. The dislocation that would cause the Friends of the Earth got what is its stated objective would be absolutely terrible. And I would like to hear Richard try and justify how he can claim that people should be living on the tenth of the resources that they have now, rather than saying, let's have ten times the resources so that everyone in the world can benefit from prosperity. We did say that. I was checking the briefing. <laughs> um, and the reason we say that is because of the environmental limits I mentioned earlier. We simply have to cut down our impact. If, if life on Earth is going to continue in any recognisable form that we, we know. Um, but the good news is we are very, very wasteful about how we use our resources at the moment, so we can drastically improve that, we're going to have to improve that, to come back to the point that you said. Um, you talked about doom and gloom. Well, yeah, things are gloomy. Well, you mentioned the fact that I talked about doom and gloom. Yes, things are looking very gloomy. And you mentioned technology. Technology is you know, it's going to be part of solving the problem. But as I, as I outlined in what I said early on, over two or three centuries, we haven't decoupled that from economic growth, so we're going to have to deal with economic growth. We simply haven't managed to do that so far, so economic growth is at the root of this problem. Um, and we've, we've got to deal with that to, to solve this problem. Um, 
just to pick up on a couple of other things that have come up. Um, I think we need to make sure we don't confuse uh, relieving poverty with, with absolute excessive wealth, because that's what we're talking about, and, and, and the link with happiness with that. Uh, people are not necessarily getting happy because they're extremely rich in the Western world. They obviously are happier when they are relieved from poverty, and that would go for the third world as well. But it isn't necessarily proportional that if you're extremely wealthy, you're extremely happy. So absolutely, the uh, developing countries need to develop, but we don't argue we need to develop anymore. We need more fairness, that's what we need. We need a better distribution of the resources that we have. Um, and this notion that economic growth will somehow solve this, it hasn't up till now. We know that trickle down doesn't work. Look at the richest country in the world, the US. There are so many poor people in the US. They are not going to get, get, get much richer and better off and healthier under no. the system we have at the moment. Oh well, yeah, a tiny bit. No, a lot. They're, they're no. no statistics. They're, they're not. Um, so it's, it's simply, the system we have at the moment is simply not working. Um, looking at China and the massive growth that, that is forecast to happen there, and obviously India as well and other developing countries, um, it is possible to allow that to happen. They have to develop in a different way to us, obviously, but it's absolutely reasonable that they should develop and, and want the health care that we have and many of the things that we enjoy. But it is possible for them to do that in a, uh, in a sustainable way. It absolutely is possible. There are studies out there that show that. And uh, it's necessary that they do that. And it's necessary that we help them do that, of course. Um, and there's too much blaming going on, I think. You, well, around the Copenhagen talks, we heard so much often from Western governments and often from the media, which it suits, to say, oh, China's building this many power stations a day or this many airports a week or whatever it might be. And it's a kind of, that was a very sneaky thing for people to be putting out there because it kind of dodges their responsibility for doing things. And we are largely responsible for this problem in terms of climate change, for example. I'll just give you some figures on that. If you look at the emissions since the Industrial Revolution, so that's back to 1751 up until quite recently, 2006, per capita, the UK per capita is responsible for most of those. And the US is second. Between us, nearly half per capita emissions in the atmosphere already, and that's what matters as far as climate change, the atmosphere emissions in the atmosphere already. India and China per capita, 1% 1 